Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. A very powerful word today. I'm telling you, a powerful word from the Lord. The Lord has spoken to me to talk to you. I'm telling you, my faith is about to jump out of my soul. I have a word for you to do with your future, a powerful word to do with your finances, and protection. I want you to put down everything you're doing and just sit and listen for only half an hour. I want your full attention for one half hour as my partner and my friend. What the Lord has given me for you is going to, is going to change your future. Let's allow the Lord to do it. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we give you complete liberty and permission to do what you have willed in our lives and our future. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. You know, when faith begins to boil inside of you, it began a few days ago. And I've been holding it back because I've said, Lord, I want to make sure this is you and not me speaking. I want to make sure this is of the Holy Spirit and not of the flesh. I want to make sure this is really you, Lord, because I do not want to say anything to your people that is not straight from the throne. And the Lord began to remind me of a season I went through back in OCC when I was a pastor. One year where God says, everything you claim, I'll do it. Now, I was a pastor then. We had a group of neighbors around the church who were quite nasty to us. And we needed, we needed space. We needed to expand. We had crowds everywhere, people lining up so early in the morning on Sundays. No space. And the Lord said, claim the property around the, the church building. But, you know, I didn't do it at first. But then I felt the urging of the Holy Spirit as I am feeling it now. He said, go out. And I really did not want to go out in the daytime for people to see me. <laughs> but God said, go out and claim, walk across the lands that I'm giving you. Exactly what he said to Joshua in the Bible. He said to Joshua, whatever you walk on, I'll give it to you. Now, how do we walk? We walk not only by declaring it, but we have to do something, see? So I would walk out at night. I would take some of my pastors with me at times and began to lay hands on homes around the property. And I did it at night so nobody would see me. Every home we laid hands on, every home we claimed became ours within a year. My faith was erupting out of my soul like it is now for you. You know, this, this doesn't happen all the time. This doesn't happen every year. But you know it when it's God. You know, God Almighty said to Joshua, he said, whatever you you claim, I'll give you, but he didn't keep doing it. He did it one time. He said, when you enter the promised land, everything you walk on, I'll do it. And then he made this amazing statement. He said, contend with a battle. So you have to fight for it. In other words, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that you have to hit and hit and hit and hit till it falls down. Jesus said, the Lord Jesus said, only the violent, only by force can we take the promises of God. Nothing is ours easily. It becomes ours as we fight for it, as we claim it in the Holy Ghost. Now, you think about words, the power of words. How did they claim it? Well, two things happen in the, in the lives of the prophets. You know what the name Abraham means? Abraham means father of nations. Think about this. Every time he introduced himself, he said, I'm the father of nations. Hello, good morning. I'm the father of nations. Why did God change his name from Abram to Abraham? Because his name became the promise. His name, every time he spoke it, he was speaking the promise. 
Abraham, the father of multitudes. I am, every time he would speak, he would say, I'm the father of multitudes. Hello. I'm, and and what is, what's the name of Isaac? Laughter. Hello, I'm laughter. Hello, I'm laughter. Laughing over what? Over the victory God gave Abraham and the victory God gave the children of Israel. Every time Jacob introduced himself, what did he say? Hello, I'm the prince, because that's what his name was. Remember that God changed his name to Israel. So now Jacob becomes the prince. Jacob becomes Israel. And every time he says, hello, I'm Israel, he was saying, hello, I'm the prince. The man who was Jacob now becomes prince Israel. So now when he introduced himself, he was no longer saying, I'm the deceiver. He was saying, I'm the prince. His name declared the promise of God for him and through him. How about the Lord himself? I am Jesus. I am salvation. Every time the Lord spoke, he was declaring who he was. Or Peter, I am, hello, I'm the rock. <laughs> Why did God do that? Because, see, words are powerful. Words are powerful in both kingdoms. You think about, first of all, God Almighty creating the world with what? Words. That's all he had is words. Let there be light. Let the earth bring forth. You think about God Almighty telling the children of Israel. In Numbers 14, 28, he said, Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in, in my ears, I will do it to you. As you speak it, I'll do it. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. This happens in seasons of faith as we are in now. When God spoke to me back when I was in OCC, he spoke for a year and said, whatever you declare, I'll do it. And my faith rose up. And so you speak only when God says do it. You don't speak when you're the, oh, you know what? I want this. Let me speak it. Ah, it's not going to work. The logos has to become rhema. It becomes rhema when God says speak it. Then it's by the spirit. It's no longer by the flesh. When the Lord said to me, speak it, and I spoke it, it happened. I'm telling you, it's happening again now. I pray that God Almighty will stir your faith as I'm talking to you. Let me tell you about the satanic, the kingdom of Satan. What does Satan have but words? Words are his weapons. You think about this for a moment. What did he use against Eve but words? He said, hath God said? He began to build doubt in her with words. He came and tempted the Lord with what? Words. Words are the weapon of the enemy. But words are also our weapon against him. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Think about what this means. Life and death are in the power of your words. You think about Karl's, Karl Marx. What did he have? Now, that was satanic. The man who preached no God, the man who declared himself to not believe in God, an atheist, the man who, is, who literally sowed the seed for communism, what did he have? He, he did not win with a gun. He did not win with any physical weapon. He won with words for the devil. And look what happened to the earth as a result of one man's words. Words are powerful. There we see death. Life and death. Your mouth is capable of releasing life or releasing death. It depends on what you're speaking. It depends on who you are. If you are a child of God, you're going to speak life. If you're not a child of God, you speak death. The Bible makes it very clear 
that words are so powerful that the prophets of old, you take Abraham or Noah before him or Isaac or Jacob. When God uh, said to Abraham, I give you the land, what did he do? Two things. He sowed and he spoke. When he came into the land, the first thing he did is what? Build an altar and sacrifice an animal. That's sowing. The next thing he did is say, the land is mine. I'm Abraham. I'm the father of nations. He began to declare the promise. He, and God said this to him. He said, walk all over the land, all over the land, declaring the promise. Why would he walk? Just to take a journey? The Lord commands him to walk, to go over the land, to declare the land. When God moved on me in that year, and my faith was so high as it is again now. You know, this has been happening the last few, few weeks now where the, the anointing has been so powerful in all the meetings. I was in Seattle. Oh, dear Jesus, there was something else. Monday night. And a man comes up, 25 years in pain. He had had no, not even a minute without pain. He had had an accident, a car accident. In addition to that horrible pain in his body that's been there for 25 years, he had, he had cancer. And the Lord said, speak my name over him. You know, this is the powerful thing. All I had is words on Monday night. I just spoke, Jesus. Lord, I declare your name, Jesus. And then I began singing and I began worshiping. What, are the, what was I doing but singing words? Speaking, declaring the promises of God. And as I began to speak the name Jesus, the power of God began to go through this man. Literally went from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet as all I kept saying is Jesus, Lord. And, and then I began to worship. Jesus, there is something about your name. Jesus, your master. Jesus, your savior. Words. I, I didn't have a weapon in my hand. It, it, was in my, it was in my mouth. My mouth became the weapon against that sickness in that man's body. My, my words became the weapon against cancer in his body. And there he stood after 25 years of pain. And when he walked down, he was completely whole. The place was cheering. His wife was crying and cheering. She came out running from where she was sitting. People of God, I've seen this work over 40 years of ministry. When I command sickness to go, what am I using? Words. When I command demons to leave, what am I using? Words. There's life in the name of Jesus. We speak that. Now it's time you declare the promises of God. The Lord has put it in my heart for you. Now, you need to hear this. And you need to believe this. And you, know, you need to do it. The Lord wants to bless you with property. Now, you hear me. The Lord wants to bless you with property. I've been, you know, I, everything in me has been holding back to really, to really say it hard. Okay, I've said it here and there in different meetings. But now I'm saying it under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God wants to give you property for your future, property for your finances, property for your protection, and deliverance from debt. These are the two things that are burning, burning, mightily burning in my soul for you. You have to declare it. And you cannot declare it just for one day. When the Lord talked to me back in OCC days and told me to go and declare his promise for me and everything I claimed happened and I based it on what the Bible says clearly, everywhere you walk, God says, I'll give it to you. That's why, you know, Abraham had to walk. That's why Joshua had to walk. But God said a, a powerful thing. He said, contend with the enemy in a battle. 
So you cannot receive without fighting. How do we fight? With our words. We declare it with praise. We declare it with, a, with aggressive faith, aggressive praise. And then you sow for it. You say, why do you sow? Well, because it's in the Bible. They sowed and they spoke. Whether it was Abraham, whether it was Isaac, or Jacob, or the sons of Israel, or Joshua himself when we, he, he went into the promised land. No one in the Bible received promises without sowing. Because that is what backs up your speaking. That's what gives you the, the credibility in the presence of God, you know, to speak it. That's what gives you the legal right because you declare, I am on God's side. I'm voting for the kingdom. Every time we give, we vote for the kingdom. It gives us legal right. It gives us a legal position in the sight of God. If we're not givers, we're dismissed. It's in Malachi. God says, you give and I'll open the windows of heaven. Or I won't do it. You give and I'll pour a blessing. Or there'll be no blessing. Jesus said, you give, you receive. You don't give, you don't receive nothing. So every time we sow, we declare our righteousness. And that's what it says in Psalm 112, that the giver declares his righteous. The righteous are blessed. The righteous are in line for incredible blessings to come their way. So now, let me get back, though, to declaring because many of you know about sowing, but, you know, we need to be reminded about the importance of declaring. Like I said earlier, words, life and death are in them. Everything you see in the Bible, God creates the world with words. Abraham comes and claims the land with words. Abraham didn't fight with a sword. He fought with one declaration. You know, God has to, sometimes has to change your vision, to change your language. He has to change your vision first before he changes your language. Abraham begins to say the wrong things in Genesis 15. Behold, to me you've given no seed, and all that I have in my house is this man named Eliezer. And the Lord said, now, no, no, this will not be your heir. But he said, what is coming out of your own bowels will be your heir. And then the Lord does something remarkable. It says in verse 5, and he brought him forth out and said, look now towards heaven, tell the stars, count in other words. If you're able to number them, no way, of course. And he said, so shall your seed be. And then he believed God. And God said, okay, now because you believe me, I'm going to give it to you. And that's when his name was changed later to Abraham. God said, you know what? Every time that man introduces himself from now on, he needs to declare the promise with it. So God says, I'm going to add a ham, not Abraham, but a ham to his name to, to give him the promise. So every time he would speak now, he was saying, hello, I'm Abraham, I'm the father of nations, good morning, I'm the father of nations, good afternoon, I am the father of nations, wow, and that's what brought it out. That's what brought the promise out. The minute his name Abraham changed, the next thing you see is the birth of Isaac. God Almighty wants you to begin declaring the promise. Not only de declaring who you are but declaring the promise. I'm telling you, oh, it's about to explode out of me. I'm telling you. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, begin to believe God for property because that property is going to be your future. Your finance depends on it. Your protection in the future depends on it. You need to go out with your husband or wife, realistically now, 
declaring the promise. Lord, you promised me this home. You promised me property. Receive the word first as I'm speaking it to you. And then believe it and then declare it. But you've got to do something now because this is, this is, this is the biblical order. I'm going to give you the biblical order, not backwards, but the right way. The first thing they did is sow. When God said, here's what I'm going to do, they had to sow for it. They had to kill an animal. When God said to Abraham, this is the land, what did he do first? He built an altar and sacrificed an animal. And then he began declaring. Because, see, our words are our weapon. That's how we fight. We declare with our words. We fight with our words. We claim with our words. We apply the blood with our words. Everything we do, we do with words. And then there's life. I want you to declare it. For one year. You, you say, why a year? I'll tell you why. Because it's not something that comes easily. It's something that builds inside of you. And the more you do it, the more you believe it. The more you declare it, the stronger your faith for it. It's like pounding and pounding and hitting. That's what violence is all about. What did Jesus say? The violent will take it by force. Well, force means repeated attacks. Hit and hit and hit and hit till the walls come down. Keep going, keep going, keep going till the walls fall out. That's why God had the sons of Israel, the children, I should say, of Israel, walk around the walls of Jericho more than once. Every morning. And then on the last day, seven times. Why did God do that? Because that's the way he works. It's attack, it's attack, it's attack in the spirit now, not physically. It's spiritual warfare. Words become our weapon. We declare it. I want you to write it on a piece of paper. Put it on your fridge. Put it somewhere you can see it. God Almighty is giving me property, new property. God Almighty is getting me out of debt. You need to do that. I did that with our church back in OCC in Orlando for six months before the people began to even believe it. And then things began to happen. God began to bless them. Financial blessings began to come. Because it's all about faith. This has nothing to do with our feelings. This has to do with our faith. Because the more you declare it, the stronger the foundation. The more you declare it, the greater the faith begins to blow, begins to flow, begins to erupt, begins to boil inside your heart. The more you declare, and then you sow, and you sow, and you declare, and you declare, and you sow, and you sow, and declare. That's what I did. That's exactly what I did. And I do it again today. I'm doing it now, in fact. Go to the phones right now. Online right now. And you sow that seed. I Listen, let the Lord lead you, okay? You sow the seed that means something to you. You sow a seed that means something that will stir your faith enough to strengthen it. Place a demand on it. And then you do it. You can do it every week. You can do it every month. But you got to keep sowing for a year. That's what I did. That's what God is commanding me to do again for my personal life, for Suzanne, for my children, for my grandchildren. Every time I give now, I'm declaring property, new property, because something evil is coming to this world. Something disastrous is about to happen out there, but not in the body of Christ, not to those who walk in the spirit and walk by faith, not by sight. Let's begin to believe God. Let's do, begin to believe his word. He said to Joshua, everywhere you walk, I'll give it to you. What you declare, I'll give it to you. God is doing it again. Oh, dear Jesus, I feel the faith of God arising in my soul for this. Even while I'm talking to you, I feel it. I believe it. I sense it. It's all over me. 
Come on, we're, we're praying right now. Father, in the, name of, in the name of Jesus, every person who takes hold of this right now, Lord, with me, every person who's declaring new property and debt cancellation in 2016, Lord, and beyond 2016, Lord, let that faith arise in them now. Let that faith arise with power in Jesus' name. Let that faith of the Holy Ghost be multiplied every day, increasing every day. Let miracles begin every day in Jesus' name. And Lord, as they sow that seed right now, as Abraham did, as Isaac did, as Jacob did, oh, Lord my God, let miracles begin. Let faith erupt and miracles begin in Jesus' name. Now, you take my word for it. I speak by the authority of the scriptures. It will happen. Call now. Obey the Lord now. Don't delay. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it right now. And then every week, if you can, or every month, you sow again for the same thing. And you declare daily, and you praise him daily. Write it on a piece of paper. Put it on your fridge. Somewhere you can see it. And here's what it needs to say. Father, I praise you. And I declare that property is mine in Jesus' name. Father, I praise you. And I declare I'm free from debt in Jesus' name. Father, I praise you and I declare right now abundance in my future, abundance in my finance, protection for me and family. In the name of Jesus, you do it now and you declare it in the name of the Lord and watch what God will do for you. I'm going to keep reminding you about this because I am not letting go of this. It is so strong in me. I would do you a disservice. I would do the kingdom of God a disservice if I just talk about it one time. Because I want to believe with you. I want to agree with you. I want to keep your faith and, 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 and you know, alive and keep encouraging you to believe till God will do it. And you're going to wake up one morning ooh, shouting for joy. Get ready. The greatest days for you are right around the corner. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Now, you call that number on the screen. You go online right now and sow that seed. And then begin to praise every day. Declare it and praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.